Heather here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about my TBR for my readathon, A Dance with the Sugar Plum readathon, which is taking place during all of December and I will leave a link to the announcement video down below in case you're interested. If not, this is just going to be the books that I plan to read for those four prompts and some recommendations for you all to, you know, choose from. Or if you don't even want to take part in this readathon, you know, this is just various ideas of things that you can read during, throughout the holiday season. So first off, for the Dance of the Sugar Plum readathon, our group read is going to be The Nutcracker by Alexander Dumas. And this is the book that inspired the Nutcracker Ballet. So this is what I will be reading. This is like the first, one of the first books I will be reading. And this, I believe, I'll read this here because this has a really nice introduction. So it says, every Christmas, millions of people, young and old, delight in the Nutcracker Ballet, which tells the story of an enchanted Nutcracker who one Christmas night is turned into a handsome prince through the love of a young girl and who takes her on a fantastic journey to a magical land of sweets and spices. The ballet score by renowned Russian composer Pyotr Irvich Cherskovsky, <laughs> I don't think I said that right, but <laughs> has become a beloved Christmas tradition, as recognizable as any Christmas carol or holiday song. Yet for all the popularity of this holiday confection, few people are aware that the ballet has its origins in a work of fiction written almost three quarters of a century before its first staging. One that is very different in its telling from the story most see unfold on the ballet stage or play on television and movie screen. So this isn't the original. The original was actually The Nutcracker by E.T.A. Hoffman. And then this one was written, I believe, in 1844. And this is the one that inspired the ballet, but then the ballet is really what everyone really knows. And I have to say, I've read tons of retellings of The Nutcracker, but I've never actually read either of the original. So I want to really rectify that. So this is the buddy read, and this also can cover the first three prompts for the readathon. So really, you can do this readathon and only read two books <laughs> because this covers the first three prompts if you want to make this super easy for yourselves. But that being said, not all of my rec recommendations will be Christmas themed. Not all the books that I'm reading are going to be Christmas themed. So there's going to be a lot of variety here. I'm not necessarily going to give a, like, a description of each book, but I will post the picture up here and I'll tell you whether it's like middle grade, thriller, you know, YA or whatnot. And I have my little list here. First off, I'll go over Nutcracker retellings because most of these will either be able to cover all of the prompts or most of the prompts, depending on like how much you want to read because there are four prompts for the readathon. So we have The Enchanted Sonata by Heather Dixon and I actually read this last Christmas and really, really liked it. It's pretty much your traditional like retelling of The Nutcracker. I don't think it's really been changed. It wasn't changed that much, at least from the ballet. And I really like this one. It's one of my favorite of the retellings that I have read. And this is a YA one. And then Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire. I've read quite a few of his books and I have to say I'm not impressed. <laughs> I don't like his writing. And Hidden Sea is a retelling of the Nutcracker, but it focuses on Uncle Drosselmeyer. So it's more about his childhood and how he becomes a toy maker. And like there's, I don't know, like the book is really trying to say something about like childhood. So like if you like kind of unexplained stories where you really have to pick it apart and like figure out what the author is saying, you would probably really like this one. Then there's Clara Soldier by Brittany Fitcher. And this is like a retelling where I think it takes place after World War II. So it's an adult romance. And I believe the soldier has been sent off to fight in World War II. And it's several months later and the war's over and he hasn't come home. So I think the main character is like waiting for him to come home. So it's like va very loosely like based on the Nutcracker. There's also Nutcracked by Susan Adrian. And this is like a middle grade like retelling of the Nutcracker. Then there's Winter Spell by Claire Legrand. I read this one, oh, probably, I think it came out over a decade ago, and I really, really loved it, and I think there were supposed to be more books in the series, but they never came out, 
I feel like it can be a standalone though. Like I don't, I don't think it needed more. I don't remember much about it, but I remember I really enjoyed it and the cover was just gorgeous. <laughs> uh, so I highly recommend this one if you want like a YA retelling of The Nutcracker. Then there's Midnight in Everwood by Maria Kuzriar. This one was really popular last year because it came out, I believe, in December? At least over in Europe. Over here, well, it came out physically in ebook over in Europe. Over here, it came out only in the ebook. Like, we weren't going to get the physical book until like March, so I ended up getting the ebook and reading it. And this is, I would say, more like new adult retelling of The Nutcracker. And this does more so follow like the ballet story because our main character wants to be a ballet dancer. It's set during, I don't think it specifically states the Victorian era, but it has like Victorian era vibes to it. And like very much what's expected of our main character is what would be expected of a girl in high society during the Victorian era. So I believe that's the period. It is a little darker. It's not like super dark, but I did really enjoy it. I liked how it stayed true to the Nutcracker store ballet, but it also was its own at the same time. So I also highly recommend this one. And then we have The Nutcracker Bleeds by Lady Lenore. I haven't read this one yet, but it is on my radar. And it's more of like a thriller horror retelling of The Nutcracker. And it sounds like we have two main characters. We have Anne and Olivia. And Anne is like the governess or maid of Olivia. And they've been like shrunk down. And it seems like everything takes place in the house. And like the toys and the mice are like fighting each other or something like that. But it's supposed to be like a dark retelling of the nutcracker so if you like more like gothic spooky vibes i would suggest this one so then let's get into the prompts so the first prompt is to read a holiday romance i am going to be reading the holiday swap by maggie knox because this is also my pick for my book club happily ever afters and this is about two twins who kind of they're just not having a good time like their luck is run out and they decide to do a parent trap and switch spots or places and like things start going better for them they both like find men and fall in love so i just love the parent trap and i just think this is going to be a, such a fun read so yes now this has christmasy vibes i'll go over some christmas holiday romances and then some non christmasy like holiday romances you can read so we there's a Princess for Christmas by Jenny Holiday. I read this one last year and it's very much like your typical like Hallmark movie romance. It, it was really sweet. It was really cute. Then there's One Day in December by Josie Silver, which is another one I read last year. And some this could be controversial because it is cheating or could be seen as the main characters cheated on like other people they were with to be together, which some people might not find romantic. So there's cheating in this. If that bothers you, I don't recommend it. If that doesn't bother you, I personally really like the book. Then there's also Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. This also I read last year and it was so good. It was probably my favorite holiday romance that I read last year. And it's a very short book. I think it's, I think it's more like a novella. I want to say it was like 150, like 150 pages or less. It wasn't very big at all. So if you want like a quick read, that, that would be a good choice. And then Nutcracker with Benefits by Liz Alden. This is another, I'm pretty sure it's like a retelling of the Nutcracker, but it's more like an adult romance type story. And I haven't read this one, but it did look cute. So I might read in the future. <laughs> and then some non-Christmas holiday romances. We have Recommended For You by Laura Silverman. And this is like a bookshop romance that takes place during the holidays and I think they're competing for a holiday bonus or something like that but that looks really cute. We have My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey and you know what holiday romance doesn't have to actually take place during the holidays it can be on vacation or you know Europeans go on holiday Americans go on vacation and this also has like the mystery thriller vibes I believe. This one hasn't gotten very good reviews I haven't personally read it but it's another shorter book that would be good for this prompt. There's also Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer. This is like a, I think it's like Hanukkah mixed with Christmas. So it's like a combo of the two holidays. And it's a romance, of course. And then the last one on my list is Holly Jolly Diwali by Sonia Laley. Again, this is a Diwali holiday romance. 
So yeah, those are like my recommendations for the first prompt. And then the second prompt is to read a book where the main character travels to another world. And for this one, I'm going to be reading Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page. And this one is definitely not a Christmas holiday romance at all. I read so many Nutcracker retellings last year, because at first that's what I was going to read for this prompt. And I was like, no, I need to branch out. And I've had this sitting on my shelf for like ever. And I need to try to get on my back list of books. <laughs> because it's getting ridiculous how many books are on my physical TBR. But in this one, I think this takes place after The Wizard of Oz. And Dorothy has become like the bad guy now of Oz. Like she's in control and she's become like this tyrant. And we have a new girl from Oz who is coming to basically kill her. And I did read the first like short story collection for this, but I haven't actually started reading the actual series yet. So I will be reading that for this prompt. Now I did mention in the announcement video that you could also do time travel for this. It could be they travel to a different world or they travel to the future or the past, but it needs to be a significant amount of time so that, you know, the fashion, etiquette, language, and different stuff like that is going to be as if you're in another world. So like Outlander would be a great, you know, choice <laughs> for this prompt, but it's a bit, that's a big book. Unless you want to listen to it on audiobook, hey, it'd be a great audiobook to listen to. I didn't really, I started reading Outlander physically and I was really bored by it, but the audiobook was really good. So if you want a good audiobook to listen to the entire month of December, I would suggest Outlander. You could also do any of the retellings for the Nutcracker. Then we have Isekai. If you want to read a manga, get an Isekai manga to read. We have, you know, In Another World with my smartphone. There's Sword Art Online. There's Blog Horizon. Those are more like going into video games, but it's kind of, you're still in another world. <laughs> but you know, any type of story where like someone from our world goes into another world. There's also the The Wayward Children series by Sean McGuire. That would be a great one. There's seven books out so far, and they're all really short novellas. So this prompt would be really good if you wanted to read a manga or like a novella because you could get the, you know, read a nice short book and be done with the prompt fairly quickly. And then the third prompt is to read a book written or set during the Victorian era. So the Nutcracker, this one is written and set in the Victorian era. We also have like Peter Pan. We have Alice in Wonderland, A Christmas Carol. Any book written in the Victorian era would work for this prompt. Or you could also read something that is set in the Victorian era. So for me, the book I'm going to be reading is Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. This is a very popular series. I know during like October, a lot of people was, re was reading this. So like if you haven't read this series, you could start with the first one, which is Stalking Jack the Ripper, or you could continue on and read the next book in the series that you need. You could also read The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare, any three of those books, like any steampunk book would work. Like, there's so many options. Like, there's also, like, you could read Sherlock Holmes. You could read a retelling of Sherlock Holmes. You could read something about Edgar Allan Poe or read Poe if you wanted to. Like, there's so many options. The world is your oyster, <laughs> pretty much, with this prompt. But this is the second book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper, Ripper series. And I believe in this one, our main character, Audrey? Aubrey? <laughs> this is funny. It says it's driving me as mad as one of Poe's unfortunate characters. So even Edgar Allan Poe is mentioned in this book. <laughs> I think it's I think it's Audrey as her main character, and her and Thomas like team up to I guess be, to hunt Prince Dracula. Which I've been wanting to continue this series for a while, so I'm really looking forward to reading this book. And yet again, this isn't a Christmas book, so. And then our fourth and final prompt is to read a book where the main character is a dancer. And it doesn't have to be a ballet dancer because I'm going to be reading Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. Look at the pretty cover. But this, I believe, is about ballroom dancers? Yeah, this is ballroom dancers. So it's about this girl who doesn't believe in love because one day she witnesses a couple kiss and is overcome with a vision of how their romance began and how it will end. After all, even the greatest love stories end with a broken heart eventually. And she ends up teaming up with X to be partners for like the waltz, the foxtrot, and the tango. And she starts falling for him. 
So this just sounds really cute. This is another one that's been on my bookshelves for a while now and I really wanna get it read. It's also a short one. So here's another good short option. And this is YA. I think all of my books I'm reading are YA, except for the holiday swap. I'm a big YA reader, so <laughs> gotta get my YA in. But some other options are A Time to Dance by TV Padma. And this is about, this is a YA story about a girl who um, gets into some type of Indian dance. I couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> it was like, it was like a really long name that started with a B. And it's kind of, I guess her, like getting into this and like a coming of age like inspirational story type of thing so that would be a good one to read there's also kisses and croissants by anne sophie johano <laughs> this one i actually read this past summer it was so cute it's about this girl who wants to be a ballet dancer and she believes that one of her relatives was painted by this really popular painter who who did all the ballet drawings of the ballet dancers and so she goes to Paris for like summer and is trying to figure out if her relative was actually in one of these paintings while also like trying to like become the lead in the performance for the summer and there's also a cute little romance so this is a really cute YA story set during the summer where our main character is a ballet dancer. We also have The Ballerinas by Rachel Kapelke Dale. And this seems like it's going, it's like a thriller. So if you're looking for a thriller vibe in your books. We also have Tiny Pretty Things by Sonia Sharapothra. And this is another, this is a YA thriller type story. They said mix Pretty Little Liars with like Dark Swan. There you go. <laughs> There's The Ballet Chronicles by Therese Mertz rose and i think this is more like a contemporary literary fiction type ballet series there's three books so you could start with the first one but i was reading like the synopsis and it doesn't seem like they really build on each other they might be able it sounds like as if they might be able to be read individually because they're about different characters so there's three books in that series and then there's also the court dancer by kyung suk shin and i read this one i think during koreathon and it was so good, it made me cry. It is a thicker, bigger book, and it takes place in Korea and France, and our main girl character is a court dancer for the emperor in Korea. So yeah, kind of not like your traditional route, but you know. Yeah, those are the recommendations and my TBR for the Dance with a Sugar Plum readathon. <laughs> I hope this helped you. If it did, please, you know, give me a big thumbs up. And if you're planning on joining or if you like this video and you're interested in watching other videos of mine, please hit the subscribe button and also the bell. That way you know when I post again. If you got all the way to the end of the video, please leave me a flower emoji for the flowers on the cover of Instructions for Dancing. And yes, also most of the discussions and things for this readathon will take place on my Discord channel, so I will leave the link to that down below. And I hope you have a wonderful good day or night, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!